Just because I think it'd be a fun project, I'm going to make a skeleton knife. I played around with these ideas on my iPad, I shared them on Instagram, and I was surprised, but by far the most popular was the Pask Makes one. I wanted to make this one just because it will be the most challenging, so I refined the design and printed it out, and that's what I'm going with. And for the blade, I'm using a piece of four millimeter thick 1075 steel. That method worked well, but on the one end of the steel there was a fair bit of scale and it didn't work so well on that, so I'm going to clean it up and give it another go. I do need to get some layout fluid, but for now I'll just use a Sharpie. I'm not sure if this will highlight the marks, but it won't hurt and it's worth a go. I didn't film the remarking as it was the same as the first attempt, but this time it came out much better. I've drilled at least one hole in those voids. There is one I haven't done, but I'm going through now with a small drill bit and just drilling out as much as I can so there's less filing to do. I'm really not sure how I'm going to do those intricate ones yet, but I'm going to start with an easy one and see how I go with that. I'll start filing using needle files. There's a lot of it, so I'm gonna stick my headphones on, listen to a book and get into it. And I know I'll be asked, so this is what I'm listening to and it's pretty good, I'm enjoying it. I've decided to move over to my workbench where I can sit down and get more comfortable. Some of the areas are that small, I have to work away with just the end of the file, but when it goes through, it becomes much easier. It's slow progress, but it's a start, but now I need to address the intricate areas, and to do that, I've bought one of these, a jeweler saw. I wasn't sure how it go cutting four millimeter thick steel, but it worked great, and I really enjoyed using the tool as well. I did break a couple of blades early on, apparently that's just how it is, although I think as I started to get the hang of it, I wasn't breaking them as often. And to lubricate the blade, I'm using a piece of candle wax. I'm not sure if that's the best thing to use, but it seems to be working. I left the center of the two A's as I thought they'd be a bit too small to do, so I decided to leave the P as well so it matched, but I'm not sure about the P and I might go back to it and do that at a later date.
That did take a while, but I found it a really enjoyable task and I can't wait to use the saw again. Now it's back to the needle files and I need to start refining it and hopefully make it into something half decent. I've spent so many hours at it that I've finished my book and now I'm listening to a new knife making podcast, Knife Making Down Under. These guys have been a lot of help to me and all share their knowledge. I really enjoyed it and I'll put a link to it in the description. That's roughly filed out, now I need to refine it even more, especially in the intricate areas. And to do that, I'm cutting up this old diamond plate, it's just a cheap one, and grinding the back a bit thin and down to an edge so I can fit it into those small areas. The homemade diamond files are working a treat, I'm still using the needle files too and I'm slowly starting to get there. I know this sort of project will be an absolute nightmare for most people but maybe I'm a little strange because I really enjoy it. I've tried to keep the file as upright as I could but now I've turned the knife over I have to refine the back a little. I thought it'd be worth a go putting tape on the back of the sandpaper just to give it a bit more strength because I'm cutting them into thin strips. The letters could do with a little more work but I reckon it's time to start cutting it into a knife. That's the first time I've ground a bevel by hand and it's not too bad, it does need a bit more but I'm going to flip it over now and grind the bevel on the other side.
I'm being careful to only quench the edge as the handle has lots of stress points which would more than likely crack and the handle doesn't need hardening anyway. It's still hot but I'm giving it a quick clean and then straight into the oven for tempering and that's for two hours at 210 degrees C. It's a new day, I've got a lot of hand sanding ahead of me and I need to get the knife and the video finished today. Tomorrow we're going away for a few days in Tasmania to celebrate my 50th birthday. That's right, I am officially getting old. I'm going to force a patina on the knife. I'm using strong black tea and vinegar mix. I haven't done that before. We'll see how it goes. The idea is to get the patina between the letters and give it some protection and hopefully prevent it from rusting. I'm not sure how good that patina is, but hopefully it does its job and prevents the rusting between those letters. Even though the diamond stone is only a thousand grit, the knife is super sharp after it's been stropped. I'm very happy with it. I could have done with a bit more time to clean it up after that patina, but I needed to get the video done. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.